Welcome to Bent TV. Thank you for joining us. First up tonight, Queer Idea. Andy McNamara interviews Bent TV's president, Sammy Whitehead. Hey, welcome to Queer Idea. I'm Andy Mack, and tonight I'm talking to Bent TV's president, Sammy Whitehead. Welcome, Sammy. Hello. Um, we are going to chat a bit about Ben TV and a bit about you. Mm -hmm. Let's start with your history in community groups, please. Oh, okay. I might give away a bit of my age because I'm a bit of an old girl now. Mm. But um, I suppose probably by the time I was 18, I joined my first community committee. I was mm. heavily involved in athletics as a kid and I ended up being secretary of the Collingwood Athletics Club, which is a very yeah. long-running, long-standing athletics club. And I did that for a couple of years and was involved in helping organise functions and fundraisers and as well as the secretary. Um, and then after leaving athletics, did a lot of... Uh, horse riding. So then for me, it's a natural thing to then, you know, I have this itch to be involved. Maybe I need to control things. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> So you got tired of running and thought you'd do some riding. Well, I always had a passion for horses and mm -hmm. um, athletics was something that we was sort of a sport that we were sort of, I don't know, was, uh, I don't want to use forced upon us, but was as kids, this is what we, we did. My brother and I, we had to do athletics. It was the only sport we were allowed to do. My parents were very animal phobic, so I was never allowed near a horse. And I carried this passion for many, many years. Yeah. Um, and then when I moved out of home, um, very gratefully, um, I went, well, I, you know, I have this passion, I've got to do something about it. So I started riding and then started to get involved with um, quite a few organisations with the different horse riding clubs that I was involved with. So um, anything from fundraising to secretary to general committee member. Because for me, uh, being part of a community organisation is, regardless of what it is, is everyone does it for the love of it. Yep, totally. So, totally. you know, it's sort of, you know, like what we do. Yep. Um, but I, I've always, it's always for me, it's been about what we leave behind. Now, whether it was for me with being involved with riding or athletics as a, as a child, um, I'm helping build whatever organisation I'm with to be better for those that are coming up behind mm -hmm. us. From the writing organisation, what was next? Oh, golly, it's a big long list, you see. <laughs> um, I had um, I had a lot of uh, a lot of friends that were involved with uh, the CFA and the State oh, Emergency yeah. Service. Yep. Um, and uh, so many years. Ago, and in rural areas, they often cross over a bit too and help each other when they're a bit. Yeah, that's right. On. And, yep. and growing up in a in a sort of you know a rural area, and Whittlesea, you know, was very much a country town when I was young. Mm. Um, so the, it, it is another way of that the community is very much brought together through something like that. So um, did many, many years involved in the state emergency services. I was mm -hmm. one of the very few women in the unit that was trained to do road accident rescue. Right. So when someone was at their lowest point and had unfortunately had a car accident, I was there to help cut them out of the car and oh, wow. do call-outs and flood relief and chainsaws, and I was very dangerous with the chainsaw. Mm. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, good. Let's so, move on. So yep. when, uh, so for me, it was, and again, it's being part of the community, um, and at, at the same time, still riding horses, and then became involved with the Whittlesea Agricultural Society, um, and joined the committees there, mm -hmm. and helped run the show for many, many years, and I'm still doing that even today. Oh, okay. The Whittlesea Ag Show is the second biggest agricultural show in Victoria, next to Melbourne, oh, wow. and it's been going That's for 154 that. years. Wow. So very long-standing tradition. Yeah. And the thing that I found, especially being involved with the Ag Society and I've seen with so many other community organisations over the years, is it's it's unusual for, for younger people to be involved. Mm -hmm. Majority people that are involved have been involved for many years because their parents were involved or their friends were involved. And with a lot of community organisations as they move on, especially in rural and regional areas, it's a very much... Uh, in a way, a dying breed of people that are being yeah. involved with it. So, And it's something that we see even now. So I guess there are so many options for young people now to you know, do little things and spread themselves out and yeah, not and, focus on and one I th thing. Yeah, that's right. And I think it's also about a, it's not as big as a focus about volunteering and being part of a community because we are, as you said, more spread out now. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and for me, uh, you know, many years being involved with the horses and the farm. So then I decided that uh, I, I needed to be more, I wanted to shift more my focus to my rainbow community mm -hmm. and uh, how I was going to be effective in volunteering in that. So long-time listener of joy mm -hmm. uh, and uh, decided, well, you know, I need to get involved with that. 
So how long have you been involved with Joy? Um, been involved with Joy what? for nearly four years now. Started out the way a lot of us presenters started out was uh, working on the front desk. Yep. So did that for a, a good year or so and went, oh, I'll give Taste of Radio a bit of a try just to learn it. Had no intention of doing on air, which we all say, mm. Mm. And, um, and just loved it and loved being part of it. And when we hear the stories from people talking about uh, things that we've said on air or um, events that we've been to and have that community feedback of what it means to them, it, you really do feel like that you're being part of something very, very special. And again, that's what led me to be involved with um, Bent TV. Good. Now, with Bent, you are Bent's president. Yes. Um, let's start with the high level. What's your vision for Bent? I know this is a pretty heavy question front up, but um, what's I, the future? I, yeah, I, um, I, that's actually a very easy question for me. I've, I've thought about this long and hard because, you know, quite you know, recently we had our uh, AGM. Mm -hmm. yep. So, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I feel very privileged that uh, everyone has... Uh, instilled this honour in me with, uh, with for Bent. Mm -hmm. And for me, I see Bent as it's, it's – we've been up and down and we've been around for a long time. It's about us turning Bent back to the community. Mm -hmm. We are a community organisation. We're here to represent our community the best we can. Right. I want to I see our community, all of our wonderful community groups, everything from Motor Friends to Vintage Men to Matrix to Minus 18 um, – sporting associations, everyone come on board and bring their parts of commu their community to Bent. Right. I want them to come and help us produce this amazing TV and that's what Bent TV is here for and that's how we can continue to grow into the future is, you know, being more part of our community. And I guess as part of that, as you were saying, with the volunteer groups, we need to make sure we bring the young people in and and have, you know, new and changing ideas all the time. And that, that's the great thing with, with Bent is everyone, you know, like, yes, we're on TV, um, but there's so many more wonderful things to do. You know, if there's kids sitting at home that have their video cameras and are doing stuff, you know, take your mm. footage. Instead of uploading it straight to YouTube, mm. they can send it in to us and we can put it in as part of a package as yeah. this is what our viewers are, are out doing at the moment. This is what the kids are talking about. This is what the older people, the you know, a great art gallery they've been to for a queer artist, take some photos or take some footage on your, you know, your smartphone um, and sends it in. And there's no reason why we can't include all that or even include it in um, the stuff that goes straight to our website through mm. our YouTube channel. So it's about getting that content so we can continue to, like I said, um, keep representing our community, which totally. is what we're here for. Totally. Sammy, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks, Sammy Whitehead, President of Bent TV. You have been watching Queer Idea. Did you enjoy that? Back after this break. Welcome back. Next, we have Powered Entirely by Ginny with a song with her guru. This is Ginny Saraswati coming to you live on Bent TV from One Day Camp Fest at Midsummer. And as a part of Midsummer One Day Camp Fest, we get to showcase some of the most amazing talent around Melbourne. One of the most amazing talents that I've ever come across in my lifetime is my guru, Pavati Sundari. Interviewed her last season. Now she's out with a new single called Illuminate. Pavati, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Saraswati. <laughs> now, it's um, you're just fresh off the stage. You mm -hmm. perform to quite a fan club out there. Perspiring, yeah, as we speak, me from too. the sunshine. Beautiful sunshine here, but um, I've got to say, how did it feel? That was your first live performance of Illuminate. It was nerve-wracking. I could have turned around and pedalled backwards out of the park when I arrived. but um, <laughs> Into the water? But I Absolutely, <laughs> but I felt very well supported and loved and had some fun and just forgot what I was doing after a while, so... Yeah. 
as your disciple, when you tell me that you felt nervous, I'm like, Psh, why? But gurus do get nervous. We do indeed. <laughs> we have emotions just like everybody else. We doubt ourselves at times. Yeah, we get scared at times and um, all of the feelings you have, we have too. <laughs> so you've been teaching for a good, what, nearly 20 years now? No. Nope. Did, did I add a few years onto that? You did. <laughs> You made me like 72 or something like that. No. <laughs> I've been teaching full-time for um, 10 years now. Right. And you've been doing – you've clearly mastered that and now branching out into a singing career. It's kind of a whole new different scary path, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's, it's, um, it's mainstream um, kind of world dance music. So uh, even though it's sacred music and very high vibrational and designed to help chakras open and that sort of thing, it's really scary because it's people I don't know are, <laughs> are in the audience and in the world. That's a good thing about your song, Illuminate, is the fact that it has a sacred mantra, but it has like a mainstream dance beat, which can relate to so many people. Do you reckon that's kind of your service to humanity with that track? I hope it's one of my one of the ways I serve humanity, and I hope I get to serve humanity in this way a lot more as well. So there's more songs coming, which is great. Singing is your joy. It is. That's the tag that's on <laughs> all of them. And, you know, us, everyone at Shiny Mission, the uh, school that you teach us love hearing you sing and the world is going to hear you sing now. What can we expect from you in the next 12 months? I think you can expect a, an album full of dance music, some um, dance anthems um, and more teaching, more meditating, <laughs> more all of what I usually do. Now, this song, it has a sacred mantra called Ombu Bavas Laha Tatsabi Tovarenyum. Can you explain what that mantra actually means? First of all, congratulations. Um, it's the Gayatri mantra that I sing throughout, the, through, throughout Illuminate. And it's, um, it's kind of like the, our father of the Hindu tradition. So it's asking that in all three realms, um, so the realm of creativity, of creation, the realm of becoming and the, the physical world, that we, um, we pull the divine light into our minds and, and it's kind of a prayer that we do that correctly and that what we do with that light is then to shine and, and be magnetic and be more like the divine. Pavati, you have been on various gay media before. Yeah, both Joy and Vint. <laughs> exactly. And why would you think this kind of gay media is actually important for our community? Um, it's important because it actually both, both Bent TV and Joy, um, what they offer is really diverse. So for regular radio stations that I listen to, they have a particular, um, type of music, like it's either historical music or it's, you know, smooth, li easy listening. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that then. It's <laughs> easy listening. Um, what I love about Joy and about Bent is because it's the media of a, a whole section of community, there's a variety of programs. So you get everything from spirituality to shopping tips. And um, so I love the variety. And I think it's important um, in terms of us becoming more and more and more a regular part of the world. Absolutely. I have to say that too because it gives – everyone else access to our community that they probably won't get in any other way. Mm. And they hear that we, we, just like gurus are like people, gay people are just like regular people too. Really? Yeah, we have all the same emotions. <laughs> we still pay taxes. Fears. We pay taxes. <laughs> yeah, we do. We see doctors. <laughs> we, we, no. <laughs> we're just really good at having a good time. Exactly. <laughs> we're good at partying. Yo, why wouldn't you want to be a part of this community? I've got to say though, Bent TV, please support it. You can join as a member. 
Absolutely. Please join as a member. Um, and you can make donations to Bent TV. It, it survives purely on your goodwill and your good heart. Absolutely. Check out benttv.org.au to find out the details of how you can become a member and check out joy.org.au how you can keep Joy 94.9 on the airwaves. Fantastic. That's Pavati Sundari's new single, Illuminate. Can't wait to hear it. Make sure you check it out. This is Ginny signing off on Bent TV. Check me out at Twitter at Ginny Sarasvati or on Facebook at Ginny Sarasvati. Bye. Namaste. Very interesting, upbeat song. See you after this break. This is Bent TV. Next. We have Shannon Powell broadening our literary horizon. Welcome to Bent TV. My name is Chappelle, on loan from Joy 94.9. I, of course, do the Chappelle Show, which is all about hip hop. But today on Bent TV, with the opportunity to change mediums, I thought I'd mix up my content a little bit. And I'm very interested in reading because I am a, a little bit of a nerd. And um, I thought, uh, what better way to, uh, with the advent of the Marvel films and comics and the popularity of uh, fantasy with the Game of Thrones, that we talk about novels and fiction and I'd like to introduce Ms Emma K Osborne, Melbourne writer, Thank you very much. to the studio. Um, now Emma, you're a writer yourself. Now, the, the, there's a sort of new phenomenon happening in, in fiction that we're starting to see a lot more gay protagonists, particularly in sci-fi and fantasy and even comic books. Absolutely. When did we start to see that change? Well, I think uh, in a lot of ways, uh, comic books and, and science fiction has always been a really great avenue for uh, gay and lesbian characters because there is always sort of a point of difference and it makes it really easy to segue into uh, a character that, you know, has a different sexual orientation. So I think back in, um, so they call it the Silver Age of Comics, we started to see um, a, a few more gay characters. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them uh, initially were villains. I think that's a very easy way. <laughs> Uh, or had been a pretty easy way in the past to sort of introduce that difference. But I think now... But they were still there at least. Yeah, They absolutely. weren't being ignored. Yeah, totally. They're being represented. So um, I think lately uh, a lot more characters are coming out, uh, a lot more characters are being featured in mainstream titles. Um, you've got a lot of characters who are, who are a lot more fluid in, in their sexuality, which is also very important um, and just creates a great amount of diversity. Because, yeah, in, in fantasy and comic books and sci-fi, there are a lot of different subcultures and a, different, a lot of different nationalities and species and that sort of thing. Absolutely. Um, and you were telling me before about a scene in X-Men where one of the mutants came out to his family and it almost was parallel to the experience of a human coming out as gay to their family. What Absolutely. was that scene? Uh, it was in X-Men 2, um, which uh, Joss Whedon had a little bit to do with. And obviously Joss Whedon is tremendously popular, um, writes a lot of um, really complex gay characters. Um, and he had a few lines that were kept in the in the movie. Um, and one of them was when Iceman was coming out to his parent as a mutant. Um, and his mother, they, they were all sitting around in the lounge room having this 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 chat and it was it was so reminiscent of a coming out story uh, and his mother kind of leant over and said something like have you tried not being a mutant <laughs> um which I was born that way <laughs> yeah absolutely um so I think particularly in the Marvel universe um the mutants are this sort of subculture this uh, a lot of them look absolutely very much like normal people but some people have uh, some of the mutants have different f structures, they have, they have wings or they have blue skin or, or whatever. So there is a huge amount of, um, of diversity within the mutants. But um, it's definitely something that is seen as something that's a bit unknown and, and that is definitely or could be seen as an allusion um, to gay and lesbian characters. Uh, and in fact, in X-Men recently, Marjorie Liu wrote a comic in Astonishing X-Men where they had a gay marriage, which was awesome. Um, North Star married his long-term partner, Kyle, so... Was it beautiful? It, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs> Apparently she got death threats for that, but, uh, you know, she, she didn't care. She wrote it anyway. Yeah. I mean, she, times are slowly changing. Yeah. Um, so what have been some landmark moments in fiction mm. for the GLBTI community? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I think the popularity of, of writers like um, Samuel Delaney, who is a very old school science fiction writer, he, he's sort of one of the old granddaddies of, of sci-fi. Um, he's been out for a number of years and his work has just continued to be influential. Um, more recently, um, a wonderful writer named Nalo Hopkinson uh, recently released a book called Systemine, which has um, been fabulous. Um, she's very much um, out and proud um, and identifies uh, very strongly um, as an out woman. So that's really exciting. Um, she's got a lot of attention, a lot of critical acclaim. Um, Patrick Ness, uh, who wrote the Chaos Walking books, uh, recently um, had another book out called More Than This, uh, in which the protagonist Seth is gay. Um, but it's it's sort of, it's introduced in the story in a way that's very, very normal and very, it's just a part of the character. It's, it's, there's no fanfare to it. It's not overt that the character is gay, you know, in any of the reviews or any of the, the it's promo just a promotional the material. It's just, he just happens to be gay. Um, and how do you think that evolution has happened where it used to be a very big thing, a Batwoman coming, being revealed as a lesbian, yeah. and proposing to her partner and Absolutely. Uh, ice storm in... X-Men marrying his partner? Uh, North Star. North Star, yeah, right. Star. There are a I lot of heroes. All the it's, names. Yeah, There's Wikipedia's really good for that, actually. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. where did that evolution come from where there was a lot of fanfare around gay characters and gay storylines hmm. to something like Patrick Ness's book where it's it's cool that it happens yeah. and it's just something that, you know. Well, I suppose it's it's really just a, a product of the times. You know, times are changing. I think in the past where characters were sort of featured as being the gay character, it's now just becoming so normalised, um, which I think is really wonderful. Yeah. Um, Kate Kane actually is a really um, exciting character, um, Batwoman. It's just been relaunched. Um, so what we can say is, I guess, that the nerds and, you know, people who consume yeah. fantasy and sci-fi and comic books are sort of ahead of the curve and mainstreaming GLBTI content ahead of everyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, I think it's just, you know, with the whole... I mean, I think superheroes have a lot to do with identity and a yeah. lot to do with sometimes hidden identities and 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 different um, and points of difference. So I think that's a really easy transition. So for yourself, Emma, you're a writer. You yep. generally like fantasy, sci-fi. What's your style? Yeah, I suppose you could call it speculative. I write a bit of horror, fantasy, science fiction. Um, I recently wrote a military science fiction story that um, had pretty cool. a gay protagonist, um, which was a lot of fun to write. Um, so what does it mean for you as, as a woman who does it identify as lesbian mm. for your writing, seeing that it is becoming so mainstream now to have GLBTI protagonists in the style of, you know, genre that you love? Um, I think it's 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 great. It's, it's so freeing to write things. Um, and uh, for some reason, I end up writing a lot of characters, a lot of gay male characters, um, and I just I find it really liberating to be able to do that. Um, and I think, yeah, you know, I think a lot of people cop flack for not writing it within their own experience. You know, um, some people might say, "Well, you can't write as a as a black woman. You don't know what it's like to be sure. a black woman, or or whatever." But when it comes to science fiction and fantasy, well, I've never been to Mars either, so <laughs> you what? know, yeah, exactly. There's certainly, that you can pretty much write whatever you want, and exactly. Try different styles, and and that gives you a lot of freedom as well. And what sort of stuff do you have coming up next year? I'm working on a novel uh, which features a black lesbian protagonist. And where can we find your work? Uh, my work can be found right now um, online on dailysciencefiction.com. Do you have a website yourself? I do have a website. <laughs> it's got a few links on there. It's uh, emmakosborne.com and it's Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. Fantastic. Yep. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Bent TV today. It's been uh, very eye-opening to see the world of, of GLBTI content in uh, science fiction, fantasy, and comic books. Uh, my name's Chappelle. Thank you so much for joining us on Bent TV. A lot more great content coming up very soon. And you can check me out on Joy 94.9. That's our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. Please visit our website, benttv.org.au, and provide feedback at feedback at benttv.org.au. We appreciate your comments and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. See you next week. Good night.